So Jacob, you've been racing for, for a while, but what you guys have done is quite a massive thing and I guess you're in a position to be able to see that. Yeah, I mean, no one else has done this in sort of well, my lifetime within cycling. Haven't mm. really seen it. Like a few, a few, a few years ago, National Team Pursuit was won in you know, 430 by clubs and stuff. So mm. the fact, you know, just even having a team that come and win nationals, but actually again, doing it against GB and doing it in a competitive time, that was you know, a pretty big shock at the time. Um, I mean, I, I didn't expect it personally. Um, mm. I didn't think we were going to put the academy lads away. So even that came as shock, and then for us to go on and do what we're doing now, where you know, we are being competitive against the Canadian national team, the Swiss national team, um, all these big nation, these big nations that you know we're not just racing you know, like Morocco or something. We're racing some good track nations and beating them. It's um, yeah, it's really cool essentially. Um, so un unprecedented is you know, probably one way to describe it. Just e equally, no, like no one else has really had the opportunity to do it before. It's it's kind of a, quite a unique. Um, group of lads we've got in the position that we're in to be able to come and do this. Yeah. Um, there's not, you know, there's, with having Dan and his expertise in aero, no, not many other lads would have had that opportunity. And then, with the new facilities that, in, that you know, the UK has now got with velodromes like Derby, gives us this opportunity. A few years ago, when there were there was only Newport and Manchester, and they were pretty busy and pretty hard to get on. So the fact that there's these new facilities makes it a lot easier and. And it means it is possible to do things like this and to create these sort of projects that are you know, competitive in the world. Well, you've raced Prems and, and, and all that sort of level, done a lot of that. You've done a few international UCI races as well. But I guess this, this, is, this is something special. I guess this, this must be a bit of extra motivation in doing this. Yeah, like I, I'm, I'm quite honest with where my abilities lie. Um, I, know I'm not, I know I'm no superstar in the world of cycling, but yeah. so for me, yeah, it really is a cool opportunity to be able to come here and compete in you know compete in world cups and compete against cycling nations i mean mm -hmm. I got, when, I, when we're in switzerland i got the chance to do the some of the bunch races as well and i was yeah. like the only non-international rider there it was you know, again said gb canada france germany yeah. and then just me like the comment like the comment says like hey, are you new zealand i was like <laughs> no, no i'm just uh, team kgf mate <laughs> just you know they didn't got a clue what it was but i'm there getting to mix it with these sort of guys and yeah for me mm -hmm. that's such a good opportunity um you know i, I was as far as, you know, as far, like what I'm doing on the road this year is, you know, is kind of what I what I thought the pinnacle of my cycling would be. I'm going away and doing Asia Tour races. I'm getting to do what hopefully is a full calendar of UCI races, which for me, I'm really happy with. I think that's a really cool opportunity for, for someone of my my ability to be doing international races. But I never thought it would extend further than that. You know, that is that is the lowest level of, of you know of UCI stuff. Yeah. But and then the track to suddenly be racing at the, at the highest level and being competitive. Um, yeah, it really is pretty astonishing, and um, yeah, I'm um, yeah, got like riding riding the wave all the way, sort of thing. <laughs> but how do you how do you actually train for? Because you spend a whole season racing on the road, and then you've got to lift yourself. I guess you've got to lift yourself a little bit special from what you're doing here. Um, I'm trying trying to um, <laughs> yeah, trying the best I can. Um, yeah, it's it's just it's just a different sort of training, different sort of mentality. It's it's not. It's not like the, the, the traditional cycling style. It's you know it's more it's it's, it's probably more similar to if you if you're an, like, if you do athletics if you do uh, swimming where you come to a facility and you have a structured set and you have a structured session and you're, you're redoing it that way. Whereas roads obviously very much you roll out of bed, go out on the bike whenever you kind of feel like it, and you'll throw some effort in on some climbs. Yeah. It's very structured, and a very different way of doing it, and it's. It was it was a big challenge at the start to start with actually trying to get the most out of that you know learning how to get like we have to now get here to these sessions two hours before yeah. um, just because you, all the things that go wrong you have to change about the gears you have to make sure the tires are pumped up to silly pressures um, you have to t factor in the fact factor in that you're going to forget something you have to drive back to the tr back home to go and get it which I've already done today yeah. so there's all these new variables to bring into it and it, you know it was quite a big learning curve to try and work out how to get that done in the best in the best way. Um, but yeah, now, now we're here doing it. We're just, it's a really good opportunity for me to try and really optimise everything that I'm doing. Um, and that's what, that, that's what kind of this project's about. It's about doing everything the best that we can and in as close to a world-class way that we can do it. You know, we're, doing, we're doing the SNC properly down at the University of Derby, supported by Derby Institute of Sport. We're coming here you know, with the only one... You know, we're the only ones warming up on turbos before, we're doing stretching routines before, glute activations before. Yeah. You still don't see, I mean, we probably shouldn't be giving secrets away here. Yeah. But, um, you know, we probably shouldn't be giving this stuff away. Other nations aren't doing that. We're, we're, yeah. at, a world, we're at the uh, you know, at World Cup events and we're warming up differently to how other people are because we've you know, gone through the research. And, and riding different the things differently to other people. Yeah, well, I mean, that, again, that's very much our ethos of yeah. 
we're not here to copy other people. If we were copying everyone else, yeah. we wouldn't be beating them because yeah. you know, we, we, you know, we're not the four best. Mm. Like, well, I say we're not the four best riders in the country. <laughs> Charlie and Dan <laughs> probably aren't you know, basically half for IP, but yeah. you know, um, I'm definitely not. Yeah. So you know, if, if we were to just try and out muscle the teams, yeah. it wouldn't it wouldn't happen. So we have to like look at ways of doing it and look at ways of making it best for ourselves. Yeah. And that's what we've done. We've kind of thank like we're all we're all fairly clued up within the world of cycling in terms of our own expertise. So we've had the ability to go go away, strip it down, and say right, what do we actually need to be doing? What are the components yeah. of this event, and how do we optimise them? And that's what we've done, yeah. and that's why it's worked because we haven't just copied what everyone else does. Yeah. I mean, it's like I say, all these. Like I said, I'm bigging up all those countries that we've been able to beat so far. Yeah. A lot of them will still just look at what GB are doing, or they'll just look at these other governing bodies and say, mm. "That's what they're doing. They're, they're, this is what they're we trying be doing. to outmuscle GB instead of coming up with their own." Yeah, exactly. Ex exactly that. They're not whether well, they're not brave enough to try new things, yeah. or they haven't got the people in place to think of new yeah. ideas. I, yeah. I don't know kind of why. The, I don't know why it's taken so long for us to do it. Yeah. But you know, even in Switzerland, after. Obviously, we like we we tried this new technique, new ways mm. doing it. We saw in the bronze in the bronze ride off Switzerland versus Canada, mm. they both tried something different as well. Yeah. They did um, some of the similar changes to us, and they rode it differently to how they did it before. So it's it's catching on already. You know, we are so making yeah. waves within within this within this track scene. So it's really yeah. cool that just four lads from Derby, you know, mm. like can, can can come in. You know, we we are making an influence on the world stage. If we're, you were your own country, you'd be doing all right. We we would be. We'd also be much better funded, I imagine. <laughs> We could all be on 30 grand from governing bodies and yeah, it'd be yeah. brilliant. But um, no, like we're, like we're all in it for the love of the sport as well. And that's yeah. why we're doing it. And we all, we all have an interest in this. You know, we, yeah. um, a bit nerdy, but you know, like we do all like, we, we actually do like looking at these spreadsheets that we're making up and stuff and playing with them and yeah. trying to optimise everything. It's not just, we're not just doing it for the sake of it. We, you know, we enj we're, we're enjoying this process as well, which is are you important. Are you learning as a coach? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, that's that's one of my you know, a great rationale for the fact that I've yeah. carried on cycling and spent a few years where cycling has gone. Cycling has, at points has taken precedent over my coaching, and yeah. um, because I've been able to come and learn and learn all these new things, and yeah, um, yeah it's, it's definitely been a learning curve. And well, that's good for the people that you coach. They can see you're putting it into practice. Oh yeah, very much so. I mean, mm. it allows us to try these new things and yeah, you know, sort of some of the new methods that I've learned. And, you know, they've already, it's, it's, yeah, it's already gone into people's training that I coach yeah. and we're very fortunate that a lot of universities have been quite happy to lend their expertise to us because yeah. we're such an interesting project they're happy to kind of get involved so yeah. we've gone through various different testing methods and different protocols and supplements things like that yeah. that have really really helped our riding but obviously as soon as I've learned about that I can then go and do that I mean I, I coach say three or four of the people that are here doing team suit now yeah. and lo and behold they've all got quite similar equipment to what we've got they're all doing similar warm-ups to what we've got so yeah. they're also benefiting that they're now getting this like world-class preparation for yeah. you know for just just like for some of them it's just it's do ip at books but yeah. you know they so they're getting a brilliant brilliant preparation just to do that so yeah it's, it, i do get the opportunity for it to rub off onto the athletes that i coach and yeah it works really well in that sense finally you've a lot of people will have noticed you're down as one of the brits Riding for a foreign team in 2018. Yeah, I think there's three of you. Three of you in the team. Yes, me, me Rob Orr, and Ben Hetherington. Yeah, racing for. Just tell us how that came about. Um, well, it's a Ben. Ben raced for the team last year. Um, the it's a bit, it's a bit messy. The, so their DS from last year, DS mm. uh, he guessed DS to us in Morocco, oh. and when we were out there and we got we got on with him, so he kind of got the foot in the door for us. Yeah. Um, Rob Orr then went and guessed it for them in China. Yeah. Um, there was an unfortunate little bit of a fallout between the old DS mm. and the management, but by that point my name had already been floated about for potential water for next year. Yeah. Robert Rob had already got his foot in the door, yeah. um, so now I was able, able to come on that way. And yeah, it's, it's an opportunity that I've kind of always been always been wanting to do. Yeah. Um, like I say, it's the, the calendar for next year looks really exciting. We're starting with tour of the Philippines, yeah. then um, tour of Taiwan. A lot of these a lot of these Asia tour races. You know, I, I'm perfectly aware I'm never going to be riding. Tour de France or any big international races, but for me, that's all that I want to do. I want to be going away and doing these these foreign races, yeah. bunch races. They have some they have some big bunch sprints, and I get the opportunity to go and do that. Yeah. Over in the UK, I don't necessarily get that many opportunities because yeah. tour season is going to get spat before it comes to the sprint, <laughs> and then most of, most of the premiers are all as hip, like the organisers tend to make yeah. them as hilly as possible. Yeah. Um, so I've only, only really got Clondike and can stop to this year to have a bit of a sprint in. Yeah. So yeah, it's, that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. I look, just getting to go do some nice flat races, mm. big bunch sprints and get stuck into it and see how I get on. You know, I'm not, not claiming I'm going to be the world. But it'll be a completely different yeah. 
program to what you're normally used to. Yeah, and I mean that's that's what I'm that's what I'm looking forward to. I was mm. I wouldn't say I was getting bored of the UK scene, but you know I was plateauing in terms of. I'm you only have one opportunity. You only have one life, don't you? Yeah, and that's the thing. I'm I'm, ne I'm never going to win Ride Ale, am I? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm never you know, in the, in those races. It's always difficult for me to make much of an impact in the Premier calendars because they're just mm. so hilly. The Tour Series are essentially just a big um, bleep test. Yeah. Where it's often the fittest person left at the end, and you know, yeah. again, I'm aware that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not as fit as some of these guys that are on JLT and Madison, and yeah. I'm probably never going to be. Yeah. So it's just try, just trying to find a niche, trying to find my own niche, and for me, I think that is trying to get stuck into some of these bunch sprints and trying to try and use a little bit of power on the flat, and hope that hope that'll be enough. Well, it's an opportunity finally that you've, you've shown that guys of your standard, of your level, whatever, can make the cycling career an interesting one. Yeah, and that, and that's all that I want. Actually, that's all I want to do. Like I say, there's no, under no pretense of going around like shouting that I'm pro or that I'm going to be the next next big thing. I enjoy cycling. I enjoy bike racing. I enjoy stage racing more than I enjoy a tour series around Stoke. So that so I put myself in a position to go to go and do that. Yeah. And that you know, I've, I've chose a career that support that that can support me to do my cycling. Um, and then I'll go. And then I can go away and do races that I want to do and that I'll enjoy. I mean. For, there's always the fact that it's a lot warmer, a lot warmer in Asia. That's all I want, really. <laughs> just, just, just a nice, t get a nice tan from racing over there. I'm just a fair weather cyclist yeah, yeah. at heart. But um, it's, it's, for, for me, yeah, that, that's what's exciting. There's about, it tends to be really big crowds over there. There's good prize money, and it's just the sort of racing that I enjoy doing. So you know, why wouldn't you want to go and do what you enjoy? Uh, you got to settle down sometimes, so it's a good opportunity. Right? Yeah, I've, I've, I've still got a couple of years, but <laughs> we'll see how I go. All right. Well, thank you anyway.